this character is not the same character as this. Ellie from The Last of Us Part 1 and Ellie from The Last of Us Part 2 may be the same character in name, but their values and ideas change drastically between games. Today I am diving into the divergence of Ellie's character between the two games to help some players put a finger on why they didn't like Ellie during part two. And for those who love Ellie's portrayal in part two, the goal of this video is to help them understand why others were not as receptive to part two's portrayal of her and to possibly build some empathy to Ellie part one fans. It is not to disparage part two Ellie fans love for her portrayal. First, this is not a video about how good or bad The Last of Us Part 2 is. The game is divisive, if not the most divisive game in existence today. I implore you not to rehash the tired debates about this game and not to share more of the hate surrounding this game and franchise in the comments of this video or with anybody in this community. Thank you. Now, this is a topic that has been stuck in my head for two years. Why was I so disappointed and unempathetic toward Ellie in part two when I fell in love with the character in part one? As the years went on, it was clear this feeling was shared by many other fans, not just me. So what gives? What's different? The Last of Us Part 1 is a story about love. The Last of Us Part 2 is a story about hate. In part one, Joel and Ellie find a father-daughter love in their shared trauma in surviving the apocalypse and crossing the country for a chance to save the world. In part two, Ellie turns to hate due to her grief-filled rage at the death of her surrogate father figure, Joel. Each of these stories explores different themes, topics, and ideas. Part one zeroes into the ideas of what would you do to save a loved one. Part two zeroes into the idea about what it costs to avenge a loved one. In both stories, Ellie serves different roles. In part one, she is more or less an innocence to be protected until even her innocence is robbed from her when she is forced to become a killer in self-defense or for survival. In part two, Ellie is the vessel for exploring the endless cycles of violence, the depths of grief, and the bottomless cost of revenge. Ellie only reclaims herself by sparing Abby in the very closing moments of part two. Each game had different goals for Ellie as a character, which is okay, but, and it is a big but, despite the artistic intent of each game, part two's direction for Ellie completely destroys her character for me. Why? Well, to put it simply, Ellie went from a hero to a villain between the two games. In part two, Ellie is hateful, merciless, cynical, Ruthless, jaded, she ignores her friends and ignores her family, actively chooses revenge over a happy life with her partner, tortures others, murders a child, murders innocent people, or arguably innocent people, kills animals in aggression, and has life-altering PTSD from both the death of Joel and the action she takes on her revenge tour. Now I understand the stories were serving different goals and purposes, but put that aside, when we're just looking at characters and their actions, there is a clear change in what Ellie represents from part one to part two. An example would be like Wonder Woman acting like her Injustice version in a mainstream DC movie. Many fans who look up to Wonder Woman as a hero would be appalled to see her Injustice counterpart, regardless of context of the games or what purpose it served the story. Common argument I typically hear in this conversation is, well, Joel was bad too. During his Hunter days, he was way worse than what we see Ellie do. That is true, but we do not experience that in either part one or part two. No, no! There! Oh, God! No! 
The Last of Us Part 2 goes out of its way to frame Ellie as a villain. It has enemies, you kill, scream in grief, and makes Ellie the final boss of Abby's playthrough. In an effort to create the old cliché, You and I are not so different. The Last of Us Part 2 does everything it can to remove any possible defense of Ellie's actions. We take an active role in helping Ellie become a villainous person in Part 2, which is a completely different dynamic. By playing The Last of Us Part 2, we choose to end the lives of innocent people or people equivalent to those that live in Ellie's compound in Wyoming. In a movie, it is easier for me to create a barrier between the entertainment and myself. Video games are an active medium. By that, I mean it makes you feel culpable for the actions and events that occur in-game because you're pushing the buttons, you're moving the character. The game can't progress without your involvement. Undertale is a famous game that explores these concepts about the player's role in the torment, destruction, or murder of people inside that world and inside that game and breaks the fourth wall, often trying to get players to question what their role is in gaming. While playing part two for the first time, I tried to find any way not to follow through with the torture scene. I sat for nearly five minutes hoping some other option would occur. Is Naughty Dog making the choice for me? Why? Why should I press square if there's no choice? But of course, that was not the case. This is a linear game, like God of War, for example. All my closest friends that played part two, all three of us had different opinions. I disliked it. My friend Ryan thought it was fine. And my friend Hunter thought it was good, if not great. As I asked them questions about why they did or didn't like the game, I found it came down to their perception of their role in the game. Hunter was just playing the game watching Ellie do her thing. Ryan was along for the ride, but struggled with some of the decisions Ellie's decided to make. I wished I could have chosen differently the entire time for Ellie because I did not agree with the actions we were doing together. After talking to my friends, it hit me. Each of us had different internalizations of the entertainment. Hunter was viewing it more like a movie, and me like a role-playing experience. How we perceived Ellie's actions and our role in them greatly determined our enjoyment of the game. When I play a game like Call of Duty, I don't give a second thought to the morality of the nameless characters that are murdering each other or fighting. But when I play a long, deep, single-player narrative-driven game, I question the main character all along the journey. Part 2 forces me as a player to take part in the downward spiral of one of my favorite characters of all time. Due to my perceptions, it felt like I enabled Ellie to make every wrong decision until she breaks as a person. By the end of Part 2, Ellie crosses lines that Part 1 Ellie would have never dreamed of crossing. She is so far removed from her first portrayal, I find it hard not to mourn what could have been if she was on a typical hero's journey. Artistically, Part 2 is a fascinating exploration of a beloved character's downward spiral. Artistically, I can respect aspects of Last of Us Part 2 and applaud them for trying to do something different instead of rehashing the same old tired hero's journey. As an adult, though, that lives in the world beyond black and white, I can also feel disappointed that one of my favorite characters has turned into a terrible human. I do not know how I can ever really like Ellie again when she threatens to kill a child to fulfill her petty revenge against Abby, or how anyone can give her a pass for killing a pregnant woman due to her obsessive pursuits for Abby's blood. Ellie walked down a path that can't be undone. There are no do-overs or cleansing that can ever take away the cruelty she committed in part two. So getting back to the beginning of this video, I believe many players were so heartbroken to see Ellie turn into a villain in part two. That is something that really drove division online and in their experience of the game. I think oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes the argument that gets discussed most about this game is complete a mismatch of definitions. Many people are very disappointed in how the characterization of these characters change so drastically, while others are arguing what a interesting and compelling artistic direction the game took to tell a different kind of story. And both those exist. Both those, from my experience, occurred in Last of Us Part Two. So for those that get all riled up about Part Two, I imagine a lot of it is grief for having a heroic character turn evil and do things that you feel some responsibility for because you played through the game. 
Does that mean any of the awful discourse we've experienced in the past is okay? Absolutely not. But maybe this might help some of you out there be like, oh, that's what I might have been feeling while playing through The Last of Us. All I wanted to do was help Ellie, but in the end, that was never an option we were gonna get. That wasn't the point of part two. And there can be a cognitive dissonance between the players and the goal of the developers. This was a story we were along for the ride with. And for those of you that just enjoyed it, you were probably a lot more like my friend Hunter, who was just watching it go on and being like, geez, Ellie's crazy. <laughs> I'd be curious to know in the comments below what kind of experience you had in playing Last of Us Part 2. Were you more like a Hunter who just was able to disconnect himself from the character of Ellie? Or more like me, where I get way too invested into the character and feel responsible for the actions that happen in game. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out my Cyberpunk Edge Runners discussion? I talked about the TV show and series and why it was so absolutely wonderful, and the four pillars I believed made that show so successful. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video essay. Bye.